Hello everyone, I'm here today to show you how you can control a linear actuator with just a simple switch. There's a lot of different switches out there, so you're going to need to know a little bit about them to find the right one. To control a linear actuator, it's probably best to go with a double pole, double throw switch. That's a switch that has two internal circuits and two on positions. This will allow us to flip the voltage to the linear actuator, allowing us to extend and retract it. You may also want to go with a switch that has an on, off, on position. This will allow us to first drive forward, second drive back, and also stop the linear actuator. You can find switches that are just on, on, but that won't allow us to stop the linear actuator. It'll simply drive it forward and drive it back. Another aspect of the switch that you'll want to consider is whether the switch is momentary or sustaining or non-momentary. A momentary switch snaps back to the center once you release it. So, see as this switch here, I press it down, release it, snaps back to the middle position. A sustaining or non-momentary switch locks into position. So I press down, it stays in that position, and then I have to press it back to move it to the middle. Your choice of switch will completely depend based on your personal preference and application, but I would probably recommend for shorter stroke lengths you might want to go with a momentary switch as you may want to shut the switch off as soon as you release while for longer stroke lengths where you're going to have a few minutes to fully extend your actuator a sustaining switch might be a good option finally you're going to want to look at the specifications of your switches these are going to include things like size life expectancy and electrical properties but probably most importantly the power rating your power rating will be given in terms of an amperage and voltage and listed as a DC or AC value. These switches here are all AC switches, meaning they're rated for an AC voltage. But they can still be used with DC voltages, but their rated values will be much smaller, roughly 10%, but that's not a hard rule. It's important to consider the power, power rating because if you do overload your switch, it will shorten the life and even cause immediate failure. If you ever feel like your momentary switch is sticking into an on position, that's probably meaning that you're overloading your switch. Once you have chosen the switch that's right for you, the wiring connections to control the linear actuator is fairly straightforward. As you see on this switch, there's going to be six connectors. And you can either connect the actuator to the bottom and top pairs of the connectors, flipping the positive and negative leads for the bottom pair or connect the power supply to the bottom and top pairs of connectors, flipping the positive and negative leads again for the bottom pair. These two wiring setups functionally do the same thing. They allow for the polarity of the voltage to be flipped depending whether you're pressing forward or back and allows us to extend and retract our linear actuator. So now I'm gonna set it up and show you guys a quick uh, demonstration. So I have everything wired up. I'm using a 12 volt DC wall power adapter to power my linear actuator, but you can use whatever you need for your application. As you can see, I've connected the power supply to the outside connectors of my switch. Notice that I flipped the positive and negative lead for the bottom uh, connectors, and then I've connected the linear actuator to the middle connections. You can solder these connections if you like, but I'm just using these clips in this demonstration. Once everything's wired up safely, you should be good to go, and your linear actuator should move. And that's how you control a linear actuator with just a simple switch. All the products that you've seen in this demonstration and much more can be found at forgelliauto.com.